So it's all well and good saying these devices are able to see the heart's rhythm and recognise when a patient's having a cardiac arrest. But I really want to drill down into how these devices are able to do this. So let's start by having a look at the SICD. It's able to see what the heart is doing by creating an electrical circuit which is actually comprised of a shocking coil, the cathode in this example, the box itself, the anode, but most importantly, some of the heart tissue itself. So in actual fact, between the cathode and the anode, any electrical variations are picked up by the device. So this probably come from the heart, but obviously you might have some other muscle, subcutaneous muscle working that could be picked up as well, but the majority of information is coming from the heart muscle itself. So the fluctuations between these two electrodes are then depicted as pretty much a surface ECG. So in an SICD, this is the information you're given. But I really want to emphasize what's great about a transvenous ICD device. Now, these devices give you localized electrograms. As opposed to a complete surface ECG, it's giving you a localized electrogram. So let's have a look. The circuit in this single chamber ICD is comprised of the tip of the lead, which is playing the part of the cathode, and the coil itself, which is playing the part of the anode. You can see the heart muscle, this is slightly exaggerated, just so you can see it clearly, but the heart muscle itself is involved in that circuit once more. But it's only the ventricle that's really involved. So that means that the signal, the information we're picking up, is only from the ventricle. Now what if we have another lead in the atria as well. What happens if we had a second lead and we had a dual chamber ICD? Well, in actual fact, as opposed to a, a generalized ECG, we get two bits of information. We have the electrical activity from the atria, so that's picked up this P wave, but that's not showing on the ventricular channel. But we do have the ventricular depolarization on that channel and the T wave, whereas we don't see that on the atrial lead. Now it doesn't look as beautiful as this. In most examples we just see deflections. If we have a look here at this example of what we might get during a VT, you can see that atrial deflections representing atrial activity, most likely intrinsic sinus beats. But here, interestingly, on the ventricular lead, we're picking up multiple depolarizations, some very fast activity coming from the ventricle itself. So we're getting two bits of information to help us ascertain what that rhythm is. Now because there's more ventricular events than atrial events, we can be really confident in saying that this is a ventricular arrhythmia. And that's key, that essentially the more leads you have in the heart, the more information you're able to gain. And that's really useful in determining exactly what rhythm a patient is in. And I'm just going to end with a real life example of a VT from an electrogram, and this is more like you'll see if you print out information from a device or you're looking at information from a device using the monitor itself. Here we have the atrial marker. We can see, okay, they're not regular. So maybe there's a few ectopics going through or something else happening, but they're not regular. But if we look at the ventricular channel, we can see that they're more numerous. And again, more ventricular events than atrial events, suggestive of a VT. So the fact that we have leads in different chambers and the fact that we get a localized electrogram is incredibly useful in determining what rhythm a patient is in. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited ICD Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how MedMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MedMastery video. So take care and I hope to talk to you soon.